Diana's sort of like a vampire hunter lady. If you look at the lore, yeah, she's kind of like a vamp. Yeah, she is more or less like a vampire hunter kind of character. She's got a decent enough costume. It's those. I'm actually not sure which era it is, but it's like an aristocrat kind of uh, costume. And that hat. It's a very vampire hunter hat. I actually never noticed too. She's got like a little. I don't know. I'm not sure if this thing goes around the back. This is just because all I can see is the front. I'm not sure if this little cape thing, this half cape thing goes around the back. It might actually. Yeah, if you can see by the still image, uh, it is a, sort of like a half cape. Which would be nice if she ever faced her back to the screen, but we never get to see it. So all we get to see are these little shoulder bits. Which is fine though. I just wish we could have seen more of the cape in action. Because overall this design is actually not bad. And uh, the color scheme is nice. Mostly uh, reds on uh, whites and greys. Good distinction of color. But it's a character design that would really thrive better in, uh, in, a, in a scenario where you can do more of the animations, I guess. I'm not like, it is a limitation of Brawlhalla, that's how the game is built. It's a cost cutting measure and really it's a clever one, but unfortunately that means a lot of uh, cooler designs don't really get realized to their full potential. But yeah, overall Diana's base costume, not bad. I'll give it an A-. minus. Alright, Bits and Diana. So this is Diana as a vampire, I guess. I actually don't mind this costume. It's conceptually interesting. It actually kind of like tells a story almost. Like the red parts in her original costume, they're replaced with like a much brighter blood red and like the bow is a lot spikier and stuff. Yeah, I actually like a little bit of storytelling this, even though it's like literally just the vampire hunter is now a vampire herself. But good use of color scheme and stuff. Bits and Diana, A- minus as well. Survivor Diana. So this is sort of Lara Croftish, I suppose. That's the idea. Compound bow, grenades on the bandolier. The grenades are a nice touch, I think. Or it could be water canteens. Yeah, you know, they're probably water canteens. It is very different from the base character, though. I feel like the rugged adventurer type could be covered better with... Uh, with another unique character. That's almost a different character archetype. And yeah, now looking closer, this Diana costume doesn't really look a lot like base Diana at all. In fact, in Brohalla's art style, you might almost think she's a different character altogether. I don't know if that's a plus or minus because um, some effort put into this. Still, hmm. All right, my conflicting feelings on this aside, I guess uh, I'll average it out and give it a B plus. It's not a bad costume. I'm just a bit torn whether it fits her or not. Worm Slayer Diana. Now I like this one. This one keeps the theme of like hunter, except they replace uh, vampire with dragons, and then. There's a suitably draconic helmet, a suitably draconic bow, and now she's wearing full plate armor. It's a good concept, I like it. And it's uh, close enough to the original base design, so I like I like the execution of this one a lot better. So I'll give this one, Rumsley Diana A. Shadow Stalker Diana. Ooh, this one's high tech. It got your uh, splinter cell goggles and stuff. You still got a cross, little cross there, like there's a little nod to you having your uh, vampire slayer stuff. And look, stakes in the boots. That's actually a really clever uh, design idea. So, it's not just any old Spec Ops kind of costume, it's actually a high-tech Vampire Slayer. And as far as that goes, bow with a scope and everything, that's pretty cool. In particular, I really like the spiked boots though. If only she'd be able to use them in combat. Still, Shadowstalker Diana gets an E. Alright, so here we've got Demonkin Diana. That's definitely a demon. Red skin, horns, pointed ears. The purple with the red is a good contrast and the green makes the highlights stand out quite well. On the chest, on the boots, and on the eyes. I think overall this is a pretty well put together skin. I think I'll go with uh, A- minus on this one. Elven Ranger Diana. Hmm. This one feels a bit generic. Especially since we really have elves in this, we really have elves in in this roster. This one's a very generic elf. It doesn't even have the same color scheme as base Diana. They sh they swap the color scheme out like completely. So again, this feels like a completely different character. I mean, there's nothing really wrong with her. She just looks like a completely different character, and also a bland version of some of the other elves in the cast. Elven Ranger Diana, C plus. Crypto Mage Diana. That's certainly interesting. The pink and the pink and neon blue is actually a nice color scheme. You've got a nice hood and everything. 
but I'm not sure what exactly they're trying to go for here. I would say it's sci-fi, but then it's like got it's like got the traditional skirts and everything. I'd say magical girl, but it's also a bit too sci-fi, and it's not really that magical girlish anyway. And then it's the name Crypto Mage. I, I don't know what that means. I'm actually confused. I don't I don't know what the direction is on this one. It looks like static. It looks aesthetically all right, but I have no idea what they're going for. Yeah, even the description doesn't tell me much. I know Miami Dome, that's like the high-tech future thing, that's where Val comes from, but I don't know what aesthetic they're aiming for for this one. Oh well. Crypto Mage Diana, B-. Pool Party Diana. Not much to say about this one really, it's just Diana decked up for Pool Party. It's got a water pistol and a water bow, I guess. Yeah. It's cute, it's cute. I dig it. Not much to say about this one, it's just, it's basically just a seasonal outfit, so, A. Hey. And here we have Lion God Diana. I actually like this color scheme a lot. Um, the greys with the silver and the red makes a very striking silhouette. And the nice touch is that the red highlights they use for the armor is the same color as the, as the pupils of the eyes. It unifies the color scheme together pretty well. The aesthetics of it is pretty nice too. You've got, it's basically kind of a traditional armor kind of thing going. But to break up the standard silver stuff, they actually broke it up with a lot of grey. And the design on the lion faceplate and everything, I think it's really nice. So overall, I like this one too. I'm going to give Lion God Diana an A. So Diana has a crossover skin, and that's Lara Croft. Hailing from Tomb Raider. We've got actually two different variants of Lara Croft. I don't think there's any differences between the signature effects on both characters. But we'll go over them real quick anyway. So here's the guns. We've got a reticle. That's cool. Reticles on this one. And reticles on all of them. Yep. And you got a grappling hook and everything too. The guns look pretty cool. The reticles are a nice touch. And then you got the bow. Oh look, it's actually a rope grappling hook. Yep, the bow is pretty nice too. It's a bit basic. A bit basic, but there's uh, definitely some cool particle effects on it. Let's really quickly take a look at the other Lara Croft skin as well. So this is modern Lara Croft. The previous one was classic Lara Croft. And I think the particle effects will be the same. Yeah, it looks like it. It's a radical. Yep, they are the same. The guns, uh, the aesthetics of the skins are slightly different, but the particle effects are the same. So I think actually both Lara Croft skins are pretty well done. Um, she does look a little like a bobblehead, unfortunately, in this this uh, art style. But I think they did a pretty good job adapting the the design, the original designs to this game. As best as they could anyway. So while it's nothing too flashy, I think they did a good enough job that I'm I'm feeling an A plus on both of them as well. It's hard for a crossover skin not to get an A plus, you know, if they do at minimum uh referencing back the original content in a way and having enough unique effects, I think. That's all you need to get an A plus from me from a crossover skin. <laughs> Alright, up next is Dusk. He's our resident uh, Dark Elf, because Brohala, as much as it does have lore, is based in like uh, mythology, mythologies like clashing and stuff. So he's from the Norse side of stuff. He's a Dark Elf, he uses this orb and stuff. He looks alright, he's a little bit boring, his color scheme wise, a lot of greys. He's very like desaturated, which yeah, he's a dark elf and everything, but I feel like you could do a little bit more with the fur trims and stuff. Like, but the fur on the ruffles and stuff, the shadowed parts are good, but the parts that I the light are a little bit close to his skin tone. I feel so it doesn't have a ton of separation. I think this there needs to be a bit more drastic uh, color, a little bit more different color separation between uh, between his head and his body, and like basically all the places where the fur trim is placed. The fur trim is placed in good locations, it's just not quite the right colour for me. I think some changes to that would be good. The body is actually not too bad. 
It's a desaturated blue, yellow, and red. And desaturation is fine because, you know, you're going for dark elf kind of thing. That's visible. So I think it's mostly just the fur trim that I would change. Either I'll make it darker black or, or I'll change his hair to black and the trim to white. That would probably make the most sense to me. So yeah, as he is, I think I'll rate dust base design a B minus. Raven Shaman Dusk. Oh wow, his orb is a potion bottle. That's cool. And he's wearing like a witch doctor mask, I guess. Color scheme's still relatively the same. I gotta give points for the orb reskin, because that's really that's a clever that's a clever thing to do. The rest of the costume is pretty similar to the rest of uh, to his base design though. It does look like he just slapped on the costume, slapped on the mask and swapped his orb up for a potion. B plus. Thornwood Dusk. Hmm, a dark wood elf, I guess. I think he's got the desaturation problem again. I think in this case, you're going for a wood elf kind of thing. It's okay to make some of the plants less desaturated. Particularly the, the bark of the wood, I think. This needs to be a little more striking, I think. Because that's actually not bad placement for like where the wood is. Like it's kind of like you know, shoulder pads, arm guards, crown of thorns, all that stuff. If it was a slightly less desaturated brown, I think it could have an actually really striking design. We got this nice little blue thing in the middle and this is a nice bright color. This is actually, this is a good design element, draws attention to the midsection. So the wood could stand to be a bit brighter, I think. Thornwood Dusk B. Oh wow. Okay, Imperial Lord Dusk. He's got a bit of a fantasy viking helmet kind of design to him, but I'm not sure about the face paint either. I'm not sure what he's going for here. It's, it's certainly interesting. Well, I mean, not really. The armor is kind of bland. It's just basic grays and bluish gray armor. The cape and the cloth around the waist is a good splash of color, but it's not enough, I think. It needs to be a little bit more. At least that's just my opinion. I'm not sure what he's going for with this face paint either. Overall, I don't know what to feel about this one. I think I'll just give Imperial Lot Dusk a B-. minus. Oh, Nimue. Okay, we gotta, we gotta see this one in training. Unfortunately, I don't know anything about her. I think she's a... I think she's a villain? Yep, she's a villain. Okay, so Nimue. She's a villain. Queen of Blood. Powerful Sorceress. Let's take a look at the signatures of this. Alright, so the shadow stuff that... The shadows of the dust stuff is replaced with a very dark blood, but it's blood nonetheless. At least I think that's the idea. It does have, uh, the particle effects do have a unique consistency to them. They, they look different from default dusks. And I think the way, uh, yeah, the way these things animate actually looks really good. Like, this one in particular. Look at the way, like, the blood congeals on the ground to, like, prepare it. It's actually, uh, different enough from default dusks, I think, that, like, that should be taken into account. Look at the little particles and stuff and everything. That's actually really cool. Plus the gem itself is a really cool object. I mean, look at that. It's rotating at 60 FPS. At least I'm pretty sure it is. That's whack. And the spear stuff is cool too. I think the character looks alright too. Um, that face on this body does have a bit of a weird proportion thing going on to it, but... Man, these animations. These are actually really good. I give Nimue an A. Alright, so this skin's name is a pun. Get it? Dust till dawn? Ha ha ha. It's a vampire! Very classic Dracula style vampire. He looks like he wandered here straight out of Castlevania. And I don't think that's a bad thing. It's a pretty possible vampire costume. Nothing to complain about. Good color scheme on the outfit. Good color scheme on the skin, the hair, and the eyes. Very good use of striking red. So, I'm feeling an A on this one. Up next is Ember. Ember's our elf. I'm just gonna say it, she's a bit generic. Forest elf, wears a lot of green, has like foresty kind of like motifs to the hood and everything. I feel very little about Default Ember, to be honest, so I'm just gonna give uh, a middling B. Nightshade Ember. Dark Elf Ember. Okay, so this is supposed to be like a Dark Elf version of Ember. The range of blues used on this costume is a bit better than Dusk's one, in my opinion. For example, we've got the lighter blue here around the legs. 
and uh, along the arms and stuff. Well, you have like much darker blue for for the straps and the boots and the hood, and then. Out of this entirely blue design, you got these really striking green eyes. Overall, it's pretty effective, in my opinion. Although it's also it's still a bit generic, but what are you gonna do about that? Nightshade Amber B plus. Radiant Amber. So this is supposed to be like an ascended elf kind of thing, I suppose. The yellows are really close to the skin tone, which I guess is fine. It is kind of a bling. It's a blingy kind of design. The purples are good. Yeah, I can't find too much fault of this one. This one seems alright to me. B+. Plus. Here's Holly Jolly Amber. Santa Elf. The candy cane, the candy cane striping on the on the arms and the legs, uh, they're a nice touch. Very festive. The rest of it is just... Well, what can you say really? It's, uh, it's your standard Christmas elf. I guess it's well enough put together. So I'm feeling an A on this one. Not too much to say. Grove Water and Ember. The skull is a nice touch. I think that makes this design a lot more interesting. And you've got this little gem. You got this little gem tied around the skirt. Changes the bit of the color scheme going down around here. Although I would raise it up a bit higher. Maybe put it around the chest instead of like as a necklace or something instead of around the waist. Otherwise, the rest of the design is pretty solid. I'll give this one an A minus. Fang Wild Fawn Ember. I guess this is sort of like a wild elf kind of thing. The horns are. Oh, the horns are serious. <laughs> That's actually kind of crazy. I like the war paint. The war paint's cool. Good color scheme. You've got like uh, purple, you've got like reds and yellows up on top, and along with complementing with the war paint and the eye color. And then down below, you've got browns. It kind of looks like, uh, yeah, it is right there in the name. It's like Fang Wild Fawn. It looks like a satyr almost. I think that's the idea. Horns at the top and brown fur hooves at the bottom. Pretty effective. A. Hey. Star Guardian Ember. Okay, futuristic uh, ranger type. Still got the long ears, so still an elf. The design's alright. Um, you've got greys and this khaki. But you've got white highlights for the main body. There's enough differentiation, I can see what's going on. And the skin, when it does show up, it's a nice contrast to the rest of the costume, the blues and stuff. I think this mo this one would be serviceable if we... I think this one would be more effective actually if we didn't have like sleeves or something. Like if this was a sleeveless thing, if we could see more blue on the arms, that might be a little bit more striking. So we can see uh, it draws attention to the hands, well, for the bow and the katas. But as it is, it's not bad. A minus. Ember the Hunter. This is just Diana. Ember's just cosplaying as Diana. B. Here's Metal God Ember. It's a furry. Design's not bad to be honest. I think this is based on those like fantasy stories of like you know mice having their own little civilizations, that kind of design. So I like the hood, I like the color scheme, uh, browns with the greens, and uh, overall not so much to complain about this skin either. Yeah I think this one's actually unique enough to get a few extra points. I mean they did just make it a furry, but you know that actually took extra work, because you have to like draw redraw a lot of the features and stuff. Uh, Metal God Amber A. Here's Meta Death Amber. The special skin you can only get by meeting a death. It's kind of like regular Amber, but with a unique trimming and unique color scheme, which I guess was kind of the trend of all the Meta Deaths. This was not bad though. I like the gold trim, it's very striking and uh, it's fancy enough. It's nothing too special, but it is quite fancy and uh, yeah, I'm liking the color scheme. I like the gold and the blue. I've probably said similar things about other Meta Death costumes, but yeah. A minus. Dragonheart Ember. It's a lot of colors. The helmet's nice, if a bit big. I feel like for a Dragon Scout, eyes would be normally a little bit further front, I guess. Maybe it's the weird angle it's sitting at. I think it's probably the art. This looks like a side view. This was like a side view dragon helmet on top of a three quarter view head. That's probably what's throwing me off. Other than that, color scheme's alright. Although I feel like uh, the blue is being used in a few weird places. Like this triangle bit down here and where it's clashing, where it's hitting both yellow and red at the same time, I think that's a bit much. The one down here in the middle is a lot better. And on the bow it's pretty good. But I think it's just this part. And the hairband. You've got reds and orange together with the blues, so there's a little bit too much color information going on around here, I think. If you took those out, I think they'll be... I think this will be an alright design. 
，再看到 Number B。Alright, one of the newer characters, kind of a witch kind of character. Nice robes and everything. This is actually a pretty practical, like workman witch kind of uh, design. I like it. And the hair is a nice touch, like this uh, lime green and stuff. Separation from the rest of the color design adds a little splash of color, along with the yellows for like the stars and the moon. This is actually a pretty, that's a pretty clever design. I like it. Fate will get an A from me. Cosmic Fade, how do I feel about this one? That's a one, that's one fancy, that's a very fancy feather up there. I don't know why though, I feel like the gloves are a bit overkill. I and mean, this is a very formal, this is a very formal which formal aristocrat kind of design I guess. Yeah, it's kind of like a formal aristocrat witch kind of design. You've got half moon glasses. But yeah, you know what? I actually can't find too much fault in this one either. Not too much is different, but sometimes you don't need it to be too different. This is a this is a decent skin all around. Cosmic Fate gets an A. Dark Arts Fate. If the intention is to show evil witch version of uh, basic fates, I think you could probably go a little bit more. This is very tame for dark arts and stuff. All you did was really cover up a face of this thing, which just makes it look mysterious. It doesn't really make it look dark or whatever. The hat, yeah, it looks like a Halloween hat now, but it's not too much. The hair is white. And the rest of the body is kind of boring, to be honest. Like, it goes back to, like, the shades of grey and desaturated blue. Not a whole lot is going on there. The only thing that's slightly different there is, like, the pink pouch. Dark Art Fate, B. Feline Fate. Okay, we've got a cat witch here. There is an actual cat sitting on that hat. You've got cat eye glasses, slitted pupils, you've got little fangs. You've got this big bell. I think it's the jeans. I don't think legs and torsos work that way. This is really throwing me off. And this isn't present in the other designs too. The legs are done fine on the other ones. What's up with the legs on this one? This really doesn't look right to me. I was gonna give this one an A+, and then I noticed the janky legs. Okay. Feline fake gets an A. Pros, cat. Cons, what is going on down there? Oh, and uh, next up we've got Enchantress. Okay, so, Enchantress from Shovel Knight, I believe she's the antagonist. Got this little... Oh, that's a gem. It changed from a star, like Fate uses stars for this one, this is a gem. That's actually pretty good. That one's a little burst of energies. Fate again uses a lot of stars in her particle effects, so this is different. Yep. So that's all the six and the scythe. They replaced all uh, the stars and stuff from Fate's default one with uh, these little bursts of energy. That's a pretty close uh, approximation of what she does in Shovel Knight. This orb is actually kind of cool. Look at look at the effects on this one. Oh wow, okay, so Fate when she does this, ties up in a bowl. And Chantress actually puts you into a tornado. So that's different. Okay, not much to this one. Ooh. She rides on a cape? She rides on a cape, that's actually awesome. Okay, I think they did a really good job with Enchantress. She's uh. She's got a lot of neat effects on the six, and her particle effects look pretty close to what she does in the game. So, kudos, A plus. Here is Headmaster Fate, Headmaster of a Magic School. It seems. I wonder what this thing is hanging off the front. I'm a little confused as to its function. Is it a zip? If it is a zip, it's not very clearly communicated on the rest of the design. The most most of it looks good. I like the hair being frizzy like that. Definitely very gives like you know old headmaster kind of vibes, and nothing to complain about the outfit itself too. It's a very standard fantasy-ish kind of uniform, and I'm and I like the color scheme as well. Mostly dark colors that contrast with the white hair and the skin. So execution-wise, I like this quite a lot. The only thing that's confusing me is I'm not sure what this thing is hanging off the front. Still, not bad. I'll give it an E. Mm. 
Nash. Who boy does he have a lot of skins, but first... Nash is a caveman guy. He's a very angry man. He wears a saber-toothed tiger head. He wears rags and stuff. Simple... Decent enough. I think the green would be better if it was a little more striking. The orange is a good orange. The greens could be a bit better, I think. Other than that, not too many complaints with this one. He's an effective caveman. So we'll give him a... A minus. Jurassic Nash. Okay, I get the Triceratops. What's this thing? If it's a gem, it looks too refined to be a gem. It looks a bit too high-tech. Other than that, um... Bones and fur and bones and this Stegosaurus head. This Stegosaurus head is serious, but yeah, I guess I, I guess this is okay. It's okay enough. Um, B plus. Team Spirit Nash. A plus. Outback Nash. Does he always have the sniper tooth? Yeah, he does always have the sniper tooth. Okay, I was about to comment on that. Um, to be honest, I'm not sure this one fits the team too well. Like, it's not like Outback people are. Uh, Stereotyped as caveman or anything. This feels like oh, we just want to give like a cowboy theme to the caveman and and while they they're allowed to do that, I I'm I'm going to be questioning why. The shirt's okay. It's got a different color scheme and everything, but the rest of the outfit, a bit close. Could stand to have different colors, I think. The cowboys even wear green. Outback Nash, B minus. White Fang Nash. This feels really close to his default. I mean, I know he's not wearing a shirt here, but it's a similar kind of concept. It's just that he's wearing a wolf instead of a tiger head. It looks like he's the silver version of the gold, the silver counterpart to the default gold palette of Nash. At least it's three quarter view, unlike uh, that one dragon helmet that Ember had. White Fang Nash, B minus. Pterodon Nash. Oh, he's getting a lot of prehistoric skins. Huh? Well, I mean, it makes sense. He's the caveman, but... And, like, artistic licensed cavemen live with dinosaurs. Still, I'm not sure this helmet works as well as the Triceratops. This doesn't look that aesthetically pleasing, to be honest. <laughs> and other than that, it's actually kind of boring. It's just... it's just... That's the hit. The rest of it's just kind of boring, yeah. Pterodon Nash... B-. Mogar. It's a bear. He's wearing a bear now. I hear this is a crossover? Yeah, it's an Achievement Hunter skin. I mean, I guess it's like a reference and stuff. I don't know the exact reference, so sadly I can't really give a proper scoring to this one. Maybe I should look it up. Yeah, it's based on a Minecraft... It's based on one of the Minecraft characters that Achievement Hunter played as. So I guess for, for points of the reference, um, what I'm looking at... This is actually a pretty close approximation. I'll give it points for being a good reference to the source material that it's taken from. And hey, collab with uh, content creators, I guess that's pretty cool. And for a character to fit onto, Nash was probably the best candidate, so can't fault good casting. I guess uh, even though I'm not that personally familiar with this one, uh, from what I can research, this looks like a pretty good skin. So, Mogar, you get an A. Chrome Tooth Nash. Okay, I feel this is a bit too try-hard now. He's still a caveman, he'll just strap high-tech stuff to him. He doesn't even look comfortable in that. Sorry, Chrome Tooth Nash. C. Here is another skin with a pun in its name, the Monster Nash. Haha. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean, it's... It's a Frankenstein's monster. W what do you want from me? I guess it's a well-put-together Frankenstein's monster. But it is just a Frankenstein's monster. If you wanted to play as a public domain character, Frankenstein's monster, then buy this skin. It's not priced like the rest of the crossover skins, but you don't get your unique name. A. Silvermane Nash. So this is the same color scheme and like overall design principles as like the Lion God skin for um, Diana. I think it, this one came in a set of like other skins that all look the same. With that kind of same aesthetic, so it was a themed set. And this one looks not bad too. I'll give it the same thing that I gave Lion God Diana. So, A. Okay, Shovel Knight. Okay, Shovel Knight for Chivalry. The reason he was put over Nash is mainly for his gameplay weapons, so Caveman's got nothing to do with it, but that's fine. Let's take a look at his six. That one's more or less the same as uh, Nash's one, unfortunately. This one as well. Particle effects are just recolored, not much as different. 
but then we've got this one. He makes gems come out of the ground instead of uh, instead of the dirt that Nash makes, which is cool. Unfortunately, that's the only one he does. Let's take a look at this hammer stuff. Again, that's a recolor. Again, that's a recolor. This one makes gems come out. So all in all, his six swaps aren't that good, to be honest. The only thing he really has cool is the gems that come out for both weapons, they're down signatures. They make gems come out. Other than that, there's really not too much. Aesthetics-wise, they did nail him. He looks really good. Like, I gotta give it up. Shovel Knight looks really good in, in this art style. He looks like Shovel Knight, for sure. But, unfortunately, his signatures are really close. Uh, the signatures really hold him back, unfortunately, in my opinion. So... Shovel Knight, A-. minus. Alright, up next, Becky Lynch that goes over Nash. So I'm gonna preface this that I really don't know a lot about wrestling, but of the wrestlers that they are included over here, this one I know the least about, unfortunately. But we've got a crutch as our spear. Interesting. Some sort of green energy on this. Cool. Ooh! Summon wrestling ropes to do this. That's a nice touch. And you get a big old green fist. The wrestling, the wrestling ropes are cool though. That's some Armika stuff. The hammer is... appears to be a fist. More green stuff. Table breaking. Table breaking. That's cool. That's a nice touch. The rest are kind of simple though. Okay, I don't know too much about the gimmick, but I'm gonna assume that this is represented pretty well of uh, whatever this wrestler's gimmick is. The ropes are a nice touch, and... The table breaking. Now that's a really good touch. So overall, I like this one too. In fact, they can't really go too wrong with the WWE skins. They really put in a lot of work into them. So hey, I'll give this one another A+. Hattori. Here's a ninja character. Mostly red. Kabuki, Kabuki mask type war paint. Headband around the hair. The red is a striking color. Contrasts well with the white skin. I think overall it's a pretty good design for a Japanese warrior kind of thing. Certainly it's a very mascot like kind of design, I think. It's the design philosophy of like a lot of red, so primary colors stands out. Good for a mascot. I'm not sure if Atori is the mascot, I think Bodvar is the mascot. But Tori certainly is, like shows up in a lot of like promo art and stuff, at least from what I've seen. But overall, Tori is pretty solid. Uh, it's a pretty solid design, so... A. Here's Kill Trail Hattori, who's literally just a reference to Kill Bill. She looks alright. Um, nothing much to say about this one. It looks, uh, it's a decent enough reference type costume. So, I think uh, A as well? Yeah. Only you know Hattori. The two-pronged sword looks a bit impractical, I'm not really sure how to feel about it. Like, uh, it doesn't really look sharp. <laughs> I prefer it if it was tapered to a point, as uh, for, like, for most swords, but we can live with that. The mask is cool, but I don't know about this color scheme. The... It's like these reds, the reds don't feel like they belong there. I feel like if they were swapped over to the yellow that we use for the horns and stuff, they would look a lot better. Only no Hattori... B. Nightblade Hattori. Kind of like a stealth version of Hattori. She's still wearing the war paint, but underneath, but like blue stealth stuff all over the top of it. It's an okay design, if a little bit boring to me personally. Um, but then again, I guess I really wouldn't like put that kind of like design on to begin with on this character. This character's a bit more loud and flamboyant. Maybe if the stealth gear was red. Like a darker red and stuff, that might work better for me. The blue is like, not really Hattori's color, at least that's what I'm feeling. Still, there's nothing too wrong with it, so... Nightblade Hattori gets a B+. Kitsune Hattori. That's a Kitsune mask. That's of course the main feature of it. The rest of the... The rest of the suit's kind of like traditional Japanese-ish. It's alright. The blade is a nice color. 
mirrors the color of the mask. So I have to give it that I'll give it points for that. And the mask is a very nice mask, so I think overall it's it's decent. It's not nothing too special, but it's decent enough. So A minus. Cutting edge Hattori. So this is uh, Cyber Cyber Ninja. Well, as far as Cyber Ninjas goes, this one's all right too. Nothing really stands out too much about this one to me. Purple, purple works as a color choice, I guess. Again, I would have gone with mostly red, since that's such a striking color for Hattori. But yeah, purple's all right too. There's nothing too wrong with it. A minus. Here is Death Adder Hattori. So this Hattori skin adds a hood and a mask to what is, I guess, generally a standard ninja garb. It's not bad in that regard, I'll give it that. The color scheme, purple with green, I guess it works. It's nothing too special to my first impressions. The main thing I'm going to give it points for is the mask and the main body plate. It looks like it's dragon themed, sort of. And that goes along with the sword as well, being the same shade of green. Other than that, I guess it's kind of nondescript to be honest. Which I guess is the point, it's a ninja type of costume. But overall I'm feeling an A- minus on Death Adder. Here is Demon Bride Hattori, who is trying to channel your Japanese ghosts. Long stringy hair, white skin. I kind of wish they would go all the way if they really wanted to do a horror kind of uh, skin. I think it could look really good. Like someone like uh, Hisako from Killer Instinct. You know, go go even crazier, I guess. This one is like kind of like a weird middle ground, so I'm not really sure how I feel about it. It's got a lot of the trappings in place, but I feel like they could have maybe I don't know made the iris as black or something, made the made the hair cover more of the skin, stuff like that. I guess uh, I get the I get the idea, but I'm just not jiving with the interpretation too much. So Demon by Hattori B. Kabuki Hattori, okay, this is straight up a Kabuki mask type of performance thing. I like the cultural aspect for this one. The mask and the wild hair especially. Very nice. A. Here's Sidewinder Hattori. I think this one runs into the same problem that I mentioned before with some of the other skins. This one just kind of turns the character into a completely different character. I'm not sure that a western theme fits the ninja. It's a bit too far removed, you know. Can't even tell that's Hattori if you gave me a picture of her. Well, I think the design is competently put together enough. I don't think that's really enough to let me rate it that high as far as the skin goes, because I'm also taking into consideration whether it goes well with the character. I mean, the fact that it's a gunblade is pretty nice, and you know, there's a shuriken in the hat, there's little knots, but the color scheme being so different and the, just the general theming, I think it's really not Hattori at all. Still, I can't fault it for its uh, in terms of the actual design, not too much. Just not a case of it fitting the the right character, I think. I'm gonna go with a B on Sightwinder. John Cena over Hattori, yeah, here we go. Training. Well, that's John Cena, all right. Something, something. You can't see him joke. He's got a fire extinguisher for his sword. It's kind of hilarious. It glows white and everything. Oh, baby, look at those ropes! That's some high quality stuff, man. Alright, that one's pretty simple. Oh, and he pulls up he pulls up ropes on two of his two of his six. Pulls up ropes on this one, and he pulls up ropes on this one. That's double the effort. That's really cool. I like it. He, he definitely got a lot of work put into him. And here's the ladder. <laughs> Because of course it's a ladder. He comes out on top of ropes. I think this one's the simple one. Not everyone has like a ton of effects. But here's the big one. You can't see him! He makes smoke machines come out and you can't see him. And then he slashes you. That's so cool. They put so much effort into John Cena, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of odd. <laughs> and I don't even watch wrestling, but I, you know, I can appreciate your you can't see me meme. So that's cool. I like it. John Cena, A plus. So Hattori also got another 
unique skin with special effects. This one isn't a crossover, but it is, I believe, what is called an epic skin. So there's unique particle effects and stuff we have to look at. This was part of the battle pass. Uh, it's the reward for completing it, I believe. So starting off, the actual design, it's pretty good. I like the flame effects on the helmet. The eye on the middle on the belt is pretty good too, and there's a lot of good color separation with the pale skin standing out from the rest of the outfit, so you can clearly see where the hands are. The sword's pretty cool too, it's got the effects. It's time for us to take a look at the signatures. The way the little particle effects fade into the background as you slash by is pretty cool. Detail for that one. And this one, instead of a cloud, generates a little demon. So that's not bad. And here's the staff. The staff's pretty cool too. All the epic skins have like animated parts to them, I believe. Not bad, and again we have the fading particle effect, so that's cool. The demon pops out again too. See the little demon pops out at the end of the staff as you swing it around. That's pretty cool. And you actually can see what Hattori is doing with the spear. It's not hidden behind the cloud anymore, so that actually probably took extra animation. Overall, I like the skin. It's well implemented, fits the character thematically, and overall, it's just a really cool skin with a lot of cool details on it. So I'm gonna give uh, Akuma no Kogo an A+. Isaiah, he's a spec ops kind of military guy, cannon and blasters. He looks like a generic military man. Nothing too special about him. Base Isaiah B. Shadow Ops Isaiah. Now he looks now he looks like an Apex Legend guy, or like an Overwatch guy almost. <laughs> very tactical, very camouflagey. Also kind of very generic and a little bit boring in the color scheme, but you know that is what it kind of looks like usually. B minus. Section Zero Isaiah. Okay, we've got some red to offset the rest of the tactical gear colors now. And the dread wires are pretty cool. Is this a robot? Might be a robot. This kind of number on the shoulder pad. As a robot goes, not too bad. Still a little bit generic, but not too bad. B. Task Force Isaiah. This is just a guy in Spec Ops uniform and stuff. All black again. The dreads are nice and the goggles are a nice touch, but not enough to save this one. Kind of generic as well for me, so it's decent enough aesthetic wise. Just a little bit boring. So B as well, Isaiah. Here is Admiral Isaiah. <laughs> I don't even know what to say about him. He's definitely an Admiral. I don't know whether I like or I don't like this design on this character. The design itself is good. I'll have to give it that. The design itself is good. Posh Monaco and all. I'm just having conflicted feelings over whether it, it fits well with Isaiah or not. I'm gonna lean with I do like it, I guess, because I don't know, something about it is pretty flamboyantly catching my attention. So, I can't fault it on that end. I'm gonna give it an A- minus and move along. Bro, Dad, Isaiah. This is literally just Grill Master 76. Can't fault it though. It's a good concept. Literally just... Okay. That's hilarious though. These are hilarious as weapons and I like them. The weapons push it up into an A+. Actually, actually high effort. I like it. And here we are with Jayun, the latest character to be added at this time. He's got a unique weapon, the Great Sword, and he's a Korean warrior from ancient times. I like the top knot, very nice hairstyle. The scar over the eye is a pretty eye-catching design element. I don't think any other characters have like one eye closed like that, so that helps it stand out. I like the build being a little bit different from the other characters. I think because I think it's because of the clothing that masks it a little bit, because they all do have the same skeleton underneath. But this one's not bad. I like the robe. It gives the torso a bit of a better shape, and the color scheme of it overall is pretty nice. It's a little muted, a little desaturated, but overall I think it goes well with uh, 
the overall palette of the character, you know? And the important parts, the arms and the legs, like I always mention, because those are the limbs that you're going to be using to fight with, and it's important to be able to identify them from a distance. They're in dark colors to separate itself from the rest of the slightly desaturated elements of this character design. So overall, I think Jayun has a pretty good base design. I'm going to give it an A. Here is Death Jester Jayun, and oh boy, I don't know how to feel about this one. <laughs> Monster Clown? I guess Monster Clown. But I'm left to wonder why though. The Jester hat's very silly looking on this character, I will admit. Especially with this tuft of hair sticking out. <laughs> yeah, I'm not feeling this one too much. At least they're still adhering to the good character design of separating the arms and legs colors from the rest of the skin. But not feeling it too much, to be honest. I'm just gonna go with an A- and move along. Gilded Glory Jayun. Now this is a Oh, this is a good skin. This is a cultural skin. I don't know if that's period accurate or not, but I'm willing to bet it is. It looks pretty nice. The sword has carvings on it. The helmet's a nice touch. Overall, I like this one. Red, gold, black. Can't go wrong with that. The oriental colors. Gilded Glory A. Hanbok Jeyun. Now this is also another classic uh, dress style, I believe. The sword's a nice touch. This one also has carvings on it. Um, I'm liking everything about this costume, including the coin. That's actually an old coin, the one with the hole in the middle. Using it as a belt though, that's creative. Yeah, I'll give Hangbok and And you notice the hat is actually slightly transparent. You can see the top knot underneath. That's a nice touch too. You didn't have, they didn't have to do that, they could have just hidden it, but they went ahead and drew what was underneath anyway, so kudos for that. Hanbok Jayun A. Jala. I think she's a pirate woman? I'm not sure. Let's take a look at the lore. It's sort of like a barbarian epic hero. War paint's nice. Color scheme's pretty good. The armor pieces are actually pretty well done for this character. Overall, there's actually not too much to complain about her, I think. At least in my opinion. I think I'll put base Jala at like a a minus. Warlock Jala. That's actually a really fancy helmet. Another skull. Everybody likes wearing skulls. You got claw bones holding up the the main body piece and femurs holding up the skirt. The sword has a little tooth on the end. It could be a claw. Either way. It's pretty cool. Um A minus. Speed metal jala. Wow. I like this one. The face paint is really cool. And very striking, draws the, eye, draws the eye's attention to it. The rest of the outfit's typical, but the red on the black is a good touch. And the sword is appropriately metal. I like this one. A. Orc Raider Jala. Hmm. They took the character and turned into another character. It's another one of these scenarios. Looks pretty okay. I actually can't find too much fault with this. And Sword and Axe does fit this character decently enough. Now, the waistband skull actually does seem to fit a little bit better for me here, like... Because it's bigger and like... I guess it's like... A little bit higher up, it's not hanging loosely. So, the skull works better for me here. Turtle shells for the kneecaps, that's actually pretty... That's a... That's a nice touch, I like it. Uh, Orc Raider Jala, A-. minus. Silver Age Jala. Literally a comic book hero. I guess she's okay. She's like trying to invoke, uh, this design is trying to invoke, like, yeah, exactly Silver Age comics. And yeah, it could pass a Silver Age comic character, but a bit of a generic one, like, you'd be one of the supporting characters in Wonder Woman or something. Silver Age Jala, A minus. Sky Scourge Jala, whoa. Sky Pirate. The color scheme on this one's really good. Silver, black, and pink. And the pink's used all to highlight all the high-tech parts. Nice. And it still keeps the general aesthetic of a, of a pirate. And you get this nice little war paint under the sh under the eyes and stuff. And the cybernetic eye patch. While I'm not exactly sure if it super fits this character, I think it fits well enough. So personally, this one's actually a really good one. Um, I'd even go as far as to give it an A+. I just, this design's really good. I like it. Here's New School Jala. I like this one. 
um, the headband and the arms of the jacket are very visually striking and stand out well against the rest of the costume. It's a pretty casual style of dress. It may be a bit of a simple design, but I think there's uh, something to be said about simplicity for something that's like casual clothes, you know? And there's just enough of a uh, splash of colour with the headband and the sleeves and the sword too, that I think this one comes together pretty well. New school Jala A. Queen of Scales Jala. Yeah, you probably know what I'm gonna say. I think this runs into the same, is this even Jala problem? This one's a little bit of a generic design, it could go on anyone. It is a very cool armor design, I'll give it that. But there's not much telling anybody that it is Jala, aside from the little bit of hair that you can see, you know? I suppose it could work better if there were more elements tying to like the barbarian kind of aesthetic. This is like Dragon Slayer kind of armor with a dragon sword and everything, you know? Still, the armor design is pretty cool, I can't fault it too much. I'm gonna give it a B plus. So, Jala has, a co Jala has a crossover skin and it's Finn from Adventure Time. It's a uh, mechanic, it's a uh, prosthetic hand Finn as well. Which is cool. So, here's his sword. Modify the smash. It's all glowing with a different particle effect. That's cool. It's not a weapon, it's a grass axe. Different sound effects, different party cool effects. That one looks more or less the same though. But this though. Jake comes out to play. Actually cool actually cool effect. The fact that he added this in. Unfortunately, a lot of these crossover skins just end up having one. Tend to have just one attack that actually has something really cool happen, like this one. So it's kinda sad. But still, just for preserving Adventure Time's art style so well, and like, it works surprisingly well in Brawlhalla, I have to admit. I gotta give this one an A+, man. Adventure Time just really feels like it belongs here. It wasn't out of the blue choice for a collaboration, I feel, but the execution really can't knock it. They did a good job of it. And here we have Gallo Glass Jala. I think she's Irish. That's probably the idea. Another simple but elegant design in my opinion. You've got a little batch on the front with the sword. Green face paint, green kilt. All this stuff comes together pretty well. Gives me an impression of uh, a soldier, an ancient soldier, ready for war. I like it, I like it. Get a glass Jala, I'll give uh, an A. <laughs> okay, Jiro. I actually should take a look at him. He's a. He's a shinobi, huh? Okay. Jiro the shinobi. He's wearing the forehead protector that anime ninjas wear. The rest of his outfit, I'm actually not really sure what's going on. He's like a... I think he's trying to get a strider thing going on, but... Yeah, with the scarf and everything. But the rest of the outfit's kind of... Uh, it's actually kind of a mess. I'm actually not really sure what's going on. I think the, the confusing part's the boots. The boots don't really look like boots, they look a little bit like bandages wrapped around the leg because of how many lines that are going into there, so I actually have no idea what's going on in there. That's a little bit confusing, unfortunately, which is a pity because um, the colors aren't actually that bad. I just wish the what's going on below the, below the legs, below the below the waist is a little bit more clear. Base Jiro gets a B. Jiro the Specialist. Hmm, Business Ninja. Business Ninja. It's been done, but this is still, uh, it's still a decent enough execution. B plus. Shinigami Jiro. Hmm. I really like the hood design on this one. That's a really nice uh, aesthetic. And they actually folded it apart where it's supposed to fold. It actually carries over pretty. It looks really good. Red eyes is a nice touch. War paint and everything. Everything's grey and stuff. I think they use a couple dark colors. Like the car, the, the color shade for the hair. That's a good dark black. Use it on uh, some of the other parts of the outfit, please. And then we've got something that will really stand out. But overall, pretty solid. I'll give this one an A. Shogun Jiro. The tattoos are a nice touch. That only mask scythe is really good. The mask is okay. The dragon marking on the armor. That's some nice stuff. And if you can see a little bit of the tattoo on the other arm, they actually put some work into this one. I like this one. He looks like a Mortal Kombat character, almost. <laughs> I'll give him a... Uh, Shogun Jiro, you get um, You get an A. 
Komai Nujiro. Is this another one of the skins that was in a set together with uh, the other white and red skins? The red accents on this set are particularly striking, especially the mask. A very traditional design, and I think it makes the costume stand out quite a bit. But outside of that, I don't think there's too much interesting going on with the rest of the skin to be honest. The only thing that has some unique features are the scythe and the mask. The rest of it is kind of a, kind of a standard armor design, which isn't terrible. It's just nothing to stand out, I think. So I think I'll give Komainu Jiro probably a B plus. Delahan Jiro. This one is super unique. Right off the bat, this obviously the transparent head. Because Delahan's are creatures that lack heads, you know? But obviously they couldn't just remove the head, you still need it there for hitbox purposes. So they made it translucent, which I think is a really, really cool effect. The rest of the outfit is kind of simple, using the same muted color scheme with the greys and the muted reds and all that. But really, the head missing like that is very striking and immediately makes it one of the most visually interesting skins in the game. So while the rest of the outfit isn't anything to stand out, I think I feel pretty confident in giving Dalahan Jiro an A on this one. He has Crimson Oni Jiro. Uh, I like this one quite a lot to be honest. The armor being gold stands out pretty well against the pale skin and the reds complementing it. As always, red and gold a very good combination. And they give him some horns as well to fit the Oni description, which makes the character design stand out a little bit more. The belt is also really cool, the little cat face belt. Overall, I think Crimson Oni Jiro, I'll land on an A on this one. 